Hello, my name is Brian, and out of all the countries in South America, we will be focusing on Brazil and how they are structured, how their people act, and how they live their daily lives. In terms of their culture, it is a culture that embraces other cultures. They love sports, they love dances, and they just love just to be out and party. They love movies from Hollywood. They love TV from Mexico, telenovelas, and their favorite sport is soccer. They even take place in the World Cup. Now, in social customs, much like Europe, they have kissing and hugging when greeting friends. And much like Italy, they focus highly on religion and church with the whole Vatican, Rome, and they also have their own major holidays like Carnival, which is sort of like Mardi Gras, a huge parade where everybody takes place in walking down the street and just dancing and presenting yourself and just having a great time. There's also Easter, Christmas, and New Year similar to us, and they also have their Independence Day on September 7th. Now, they love stories and folklore is just usually passed down from generation to generation. As usual, focused on the good versus bad, how the good is outmatched and yet has to challenge the big bad. Now, their stories do change with events to their country. In terms of their past history, they had African slaves. There was Portuguese settlers who took over the country for a while until they gained their own independence and some of their influences kind of made their way into the stories. They also have a lot of European tales that are very similar to the way they tell their stories. But in terms of some figures, we have Ali Moa, who is a ghost who seduces men and basically carries them to their death out at sea. Sort of like the sirens. We also have Best of Farah, or in other words, as we know him, Satan, who is meant to scare the hell out of everyone. And he is meant to keep you in check. You don't want to act out or this guy on the right is going to face you off. Now, in terms of music and dance, Brazil Brazilians love to party. And their main dance is samba. It has become their national dance. And as you can see on the right here, they dress with a lot of feathers, sometimes mask. And this is sort of the... African um, influences that they've had embraced. They love um, showing off their bodies. They love moving. They just love basically to party. And there are some changes in terms of when you split it between rural and urban areas and Hispanic versus African um, influences, which could kind of change outfits, their dances, and basically how they move. But they all like to take place in carnival and they love just to let loose. In terms of music, we do have Foro, Repente, Coco de Roda, Axe, Sarentejo, Brega, Frevo, and much more. These are sort of like our genres of pop, country, and um, but their own originals of Brazil. And they have come up with it themselves and they're actually quite good. Now, Brazil is all about party, but... We do have the federal government and not much in interesting, but, you know, <laughs> uh, they are the Federative Republic of Brazil, and it does include 26 states, each with their local government. And it's sort of like the United States, sort of much like that influence part I've said before. They have a huge influence from the United States and the way they just chose to um, have their government. They also have three branches of government, the legislative, executive, and judicial. And much like our executive, they also have their own president and vice president. And currently their president is Jair Bolsonaro. But there are some issues with him that we'll get to later. Uh, in terms of how the government runs, it's very similar to ours. The president has his own cabinet of ministries. We also have their own National Congress, which is also broken into two chambers, much like our Congress. They have the Federal Senate and the Chamber of Deputies. And one is based off population, and the other is based off equal representation. They also have their Supreme Federal Court, much like our Supreme Court, which is sort of backed up at the moment because 
the president has been accused of a lot of corruption charges against uh, money laundering, which is sort of not claiming all the money that you have pers- uh, personally in your bank account. And that sort of stalled every other case within the nation. Now, in terms of issues, like I've stated before, there is a lot of corruption. A lot of people are trying to get their hands on money because the government simply cannot provide. They recently had a, uh, not a global, they had a recession that lasted from 2014 to 2017 that sort of just dropped every, actually raised every number. Unemployment was high, poverty was high, there was a lot of crime, and the government wasn't much doing anything about it. There was even party leaders using public money for candidates that don't exist on the ballot themselves. Now, in terms of the economy, they are a free market, but they do rank 144 in the world. They have a 3.4 trillion GDP, which makes them the eighth largest economy in the world, and the largest in Latin America. However, their unemployment is high at 12.5%. Now, the president has tried to push um, laws to change that, and they sort of work. The poverty rate is going down, unemployment rate is going down, and there's changes going on. In terms of social issues, there is a lot of crime. There's a lot of police brutality and corruption. There's School system is broken. There's malnutrition because people can't afford the food or the food has gone bad due to environmental issues because there's a lot of dry spots and much of their forest is drying up. There's also high infant mortality and a housing deficit, which sort of play on the whole economy dropping because money is just not moving. It's not flowing. Much like America. Yes. The coffee economy time. is sort of stopped at the coffee, moment. Coffee, 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 coffee. And that Cino. ends our Java. presentation. Yes.